All right, welcome to Critical Reasoning. Let's take a look at this first question. It says, life expectancy is the average age at death of the entire live-born population. In the middle of the 19th century, life expectancy in North America was 40 years, whereas now it is nearly 80 years. Thus, in those days, people must have been considered old at an age that we now consider the prime of life. Which of the following, if true, undermines the argument above? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is highlight this last sentence here. And the reason I'm doing that is because this is the conclusion of the passage. It's important to always identify which is the conclusion because most of these questions are going to ask you to do something to that conclusion, such as weaken or strengthen or even find the conclusion. Uh, in this case, it says which of the following of true undermines the argument above. So what we're looking to do is to weaken this or to or to have a find an answer that overturns or rejects what this conclusion is. And what is the conclusion? The conclusion is saying that people must have been considered old at an age that we now consider the prime of life. So they're saying that back in the 19th century, um, this, a 30-year-old might have been considered an old grandpa, whereas nowadays we look at someone who's 80 to be elderly. And they're saying that back then, that must have been what happened based on this information. What all this information really says is that the average age of death was 40. What does average mean? That means a lot of people may have been 20, a lot of people may have been 60. It just happens to be that the average was 40. So it doesn't necessarily mean that just because you were 30 or 40 that you were an old grandpa. So um, just throwing that out there. Let's look at the different answer choices. A says, in the middle of the 19th century, the population of North America was significantly smaller than it is today. Well, regardless of the size, I don't think that really affects uh, how old people were. You could have a small population that was old, you could have a large population that was old, or you could have a small population where people died young, and same with um, a, a, a large population. So it doesn't actually matter. A is pretty irrelevant. B says, most of the gains in life expectancy in the last 150 years have come from reductions in the number of infants who die in the first year of life. This is interesting because it, what it's saying is that there were a lot of infants or babies who were dying at a young age and what happened in the last 150 years is that they stopped dying or that they at least grew to an, to an older age before dying. Sounds grim, but what's interesting here is if these babies were actually dragging down the average and causing, uh, you know, if a lot of babies were dying, then that could explain why the life expectancy was 40. The majority of the population could have died at a uh, hundred years old, but because there were thousands of babies that were dying at one year old, it caused the actual average to be at 40. So if this were the case, it would actually weaken uh, or undermine this entire argument because what it means is that people who were 30 or 40 were not considered old. They were just considered normal or middle-aged. Um, rather, it was because of these babies that that the uh, the average was around 40 years. Anyway, B could be the right answer, so I'm going to put a check mark next to it, and we'll come back to it. Now let's look at C. C says many of the people who live to an advanced age today do so only because of medical technology that was unknown in the 19th century. Well, the passage doesn't say anything about medical technology. This is more ex uh, this this explains perhaps why less people are dying uh, these days. But it doesn't really do anything to support the uh, the conclusion. So let's look at uh, D. The proportion of people who die in their 70s is significantly smaller today than is the proportion of people who die in their 80s. So what this is saying is that people are dying at an older and older and older age. So this actually supports uh, the conclusion, right? Because the conclusion says people must have been considered old at an age we now consider the prime of life. If more and more people are dying at an older and older age, then yeah, I think this does support the conclusion. But we're looking to undermine the conclusion, so it's not D. E. More people in the middle of the 19th century engaged regularly in vigorous physical activity than do so today. E is very similar to C in that it gives a reason, vigorous physical activity. Uh, this is the reason given. At, uh, to explain why people are dying at a perhaps older age or why the uh, average age of death is now older. So both E and C don't really support, or it, it doesn't really under, they don't really undermine the argument. They actually sort of support. 
if there could be more information. So C, D, and E are all out of the question. And it looks like at when all is said and done that B is actually the answer that would most undermine the argument. So B is the answer. Okay, now let's look at number two. Scientists propose placing seismic stations on the floor of the Pacific Ocean to warn threatened coastal communities on the northwestern coast of the United States of approaching tidal waves caused by earthquakes. Since forewarned communities could take steps to evacuate, many of the injuries and deaths that would otherwise occur could be avoided if the government would implement this proposal. The answer to which of the following questions would be most important in determining whether implementing the proposal would be likely to achieve the desired result. Okay, so which the answer to which of the following questions would be the most important. So we what we are going to be looking for in the answer choices is a question that if we were had the answer to, we could say yes, this is true. This whole thing is true or we could say no, it's not true. It's not going to work. So this is a situation where you are not going to be looking to weaken or strengthen, you are going to look to evaluate. Let's go back and let's read this more closely here. It says they're going to place seismic stations. That's going to warn these coastal communities. So there's a community that's going to be warned um, whenever there's a tidal wave or an earthquake. They're saying that these communities could, because it could uh, take steps to evacuate if they were warned. And as a result, many of the injuries and deaths that would otherwise occur would be avoided if only the government would implement this proposal. So what's important to know? What is a question we could ask so that if the answer to that question was yes, we could say, yeah, this is going to work. And if they said no, then we could say, nah, this isn't going to work. Well, let's, let's, let's go through each of these. A, when was the last time that the coastal communities were threatened by an approaching tidal wave? If I, if, if I had the answer to this, I said 1927. Does this actually help uh, evaluate the entire passage up here? No, I don't think so. It doesn't matter what time uh, the last tidal wave was. All we know is for the next one, we should probably implement this or we shouldn't implement this to save lives. So A is out of the question. B says, how far below sea level would the stations be located? That's completely irrelevant. Who cares about the sea level? C. Would there be enough time after receiving warning of an approaching tidal wave for communities to evacuate safely? Well, C could very well be the answer. If you look at C, and the answer is, yes, there would be enough time, then that supports this entire proposal, right? Because it means that if the government implements this proposal and there's enough time to warn everybody, then people could evacuate safely and lives would be saved. If the answer is no, people wouldn't be able to react fast enough, then this is a completely useless proposal since the same amount of people are going to die um, from these tidal waves and same amount of destruction and it's just not going to work out. So C could very well be the answer, but let's see if D or E gives us a better answer. D says, how soon after a tidal wave hits land is it safe for evacuees to return to their communities? Well, this is, is talking about what happens after a tidal wave already hits. And by that point, who knows if this is, has worked or not. So D is completely irrelevant. E, can the stations be equipped to collect and relay information about phenomena other than tidal waves caused by earthquakes? E, hmm, E asks an interesting question. It says, is there anything else we can do? Can we figure out hurricanes? Can we figure out, I don't know, Gulf of Mexico oil spill? You know, there's a lot of things that E is asking. But E is more of a question that you would ask if this plan was already successful and they were looking for to expand it. Uh, what we want to know right now is would this plan actually make sense? So E is a little premature. So C is going to be the correct answer. Okay, let's look at number three. Homeowners aged 40 to 50 are more likely to purchase ice cream uh, then, no, purchase are more, like, more likely to purchase ice cream and more likely to purchase it in larger amounts than are members of any other demographic group. The popular belief that teenagers eat more ice cream than adults must therefore be false. This is the conclusion, and the conclusion is that that must be false. The argument is flawed because the author what? So what we're looking to do is... Uh, is figure out why this conclusion is wrong. Okay, so what have what are they really saying here? They're saying that these 40, 50 year olds 
are likely to purchase ice cream and they're uh, they're going to purchase it in larger amounts than any other group therefore teenagers must uh, must not be eating more ice cream well there's purchasing and then there's eating I mean this is just illogical right because adults could be purchasing the ice cream but then the, their kids are eating it so it doesn't mean that the teenagers aren't eating more teenagers could still be eating more I think we found the flaw so let's look at the answers a says fails to distinguish between purchasing and consuming ah there we go uh, it is confusing purchasing and consuming B does not supply information about homeowners in age groups other than 40 to 50 that doesn't really make the argument flawed it just makes the argument in incomplete not necessarily incomplete maybe that's the wrong word it makes it um, it's not considering all the possibilities but it doesn't make the entire argument flawed anyway C says depends on popular belief rather than on documented research findings I don't think they ever mention whether this information was from a research finding or from popular belief so C is is wrong Desus does not specify the precise amount of ice cream purchased by any demographic group. Again, the uh, conclusion is talking about eating more ice cream, not buying more ice cream. So D is irrelevant. E says, discusses ice cream rather than more nutritious and healthful foods. Completely irrelevant. This has nothing to do with the nutrition. Uh, so the answer is going to be A. Okay, let's look at number four. According to a prediction of the not-so-distant future published in 1940, electricity would revolutionize our agriculture. Electrodes would be inserted into the soil, and the current between them would kill bugs and weeds and make crop plants stronger. Which of the following, if true, most strongly indicates that the logic of the prediction above is flawed? So again, we're going to be undermining the conclusion. And the conclusion is that... Let's see. The conclusion is that uh, the electricity would revolutionize agriculture. And that happens because electrodes would be put into the soil and the current would kill bugs and weeds. I think already I can see where the issue is. They're saying that they're going to put electricity through the ground and that, that electricity is going to kill bugs and weeds. But why? how would electricity be able to distinguish between weeds and crop plants? Because aren't both weeds and plants plants? Uh, if the electricity could kill the weeds, how would that electricity know that, hey, this is a weed and that's a crop plant? I need to kill the weeds and not the crop plants. It's kind of crazy. So let's look at the answer choices. A says, in order for farmers to avoid electric shock while working in the fields, the current could be turned off at such times without diminishing the intended effects. Hmm. Okay. B. If the proposed plan for using electricity were put into practice, farmers would save on chemicals now being added to the soil. That's kind of irrelevant. It doesn't really indicate that the logic is flawed. It just tells you that they would save money on chemicals. C says, it cannot be taken for granted that the use of electricity is always beneficial. Eh, that could be true because it's saying that sometimes electricity might be bad and therefore... The logic could be wrong, or flawed that it would revolutionize our agriculture. D says, since weeds are plants, electricity would affect weeds in the same way as it would affect crop plants. Ah, there we go. D could also be the answer, and D seems to be stronger than C. E says, because a planting machine would need to avoid coming into contact with the electrodes, new parts for planting machines would need to be designed. That explains a reason why this wouldn't be a good idea, but it doesn't make the entire prediction f false and it, it doesn't make it flawed what this says is man if we do decide to implement this there's something that we need to account for so e is sort of irrelevant so between c and d d is going to be the right answer because d is the one that really explains why it's flawed and it's what i talked about earlier when you put electrodes in the ground that electricity is not going to differentiate between weeds and crop plants so D says that since weeds are plants electricity would affect the weeds in the same way that it would affect crop plants so that's why D is the correct answer okay looks like I'm running out of time but join me in the next video when I uh, go through problems five six and seven see you soon